Good morning everyone, today I'm in New York City to show you the power of 3D scanning. It doesn't matter what software you're using or if you're doing 3D art at all in order to learn from this video. All of the assets you see me create will be uploaded to my Patreon. Enjoy! For those of you who don't know what photo scanning or photogrammetry is, you just take about a hundred photos of an object and then let the computer calculate a 3D model from the pictures. Oh, and I promise you will look funny and people will stare at you. But if you want to create high quality scans that actually look good, you have to look out for a few things. And that's basically what this video is about. I'm doing all of my scans on my phone, which makes the whole process super easy and quick. The app I'm using is called Polycam, but there are alternatives like Displayland, Meshroom or Reality Capture. Before you start scanning, you have to make sure the weather conditions are good. Rain is bad because you will get wet, obviously, but it also leads to problems when scanning because it makes all of the surfaces reflective. And I'll show you in a minute why that's a problem. Sunny weather isn't optimal either because all of the harsh shadows will be baked into your texture which makes it impossible to change the direction of the light in your 3D software. So find some shade or just wait until it's cloudy. Shiny objects like this one confuse the software, that's why you should be scanning stuff with a rough surface. Things like fences with tiny geometry details are hard to scan as well, because the software doesn't always pick up the fine details. Once you've found the perfect subject, you can start the scan on your phone or take photos with your camera. On the newer iPhones, you have the option to use the LiDAR sensor for 3D scanning, but the technology is not mature enough yet to produce high quality models. So if you need a detailed asset, use the photo option. LiDAR is good to get a quick scan of rooms or large-scale environments. Now start walking around the subject slowly. If you're using a camera, increase the shutter speed to not get blurry images. Try to take photos from every angle. People will think you're mentally disabled, but just act like you know what you're doing. Rocks are great for scanning because it's hard to spot flaws in the model. And I got really excited for these traffic cones, so I had to quickly scan them. All the 30 models I scanned are available on my Patreon. You can download three of them for free from the link in the description. But I encourage you to go outside and scan your own assets in your town, park or garden. Once I felt like I had enough scans, I launched the Polycam website on my computer and imported all of the assets into Blender. In Blender I start organizing the assets. A human model helps me with the scale. Then I do a basic material setup. The normal maps from Polycam are broken, so I just delete them. We will deal with bump and roughness later. If you get this weird shadow effect, disable auto smooth or go into edit mode and back to object mode. Now repeat that for the rest of the scans. It's a good idea to select everything in edit mode and press M and merge by distance to remove all the overlapping geometry that Polycam created. Next, we have to remove all the stuff we don't need. Select the asset in edit mode. The C key lets you use a different selection tool to refine the selection. Press Ctrl I to invert the selection and delete everything. Select the bottom edge and scale it to zero on the Z axis with proportional editing enabled to clean up the model. Do that for the rest of the scans as well. Now plug the image texture into the height input of a bump node to get some more surface details. You can do the same with the roughness and use a color ramp to adjust the intensity. You can copy the node setup to the other assets. Tweak a few of the settings if necessary. You can use a hue saturation node to correct the color. I increased the transmission value on the material of the paper bag to make it slightly transparent. If your scan looks a little bit spiky, you can apply a smooth modifier and turn up the repeat count. Well, and that's basically it. You can now fill your scene with your own assets without the need to buy anything. Now you don't even have to watch my last video to find out where you can get basically an infinite number of free assets. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to my channel and join my Patreon as well to get all of the assets.